Alex Napoleon could not have failed to obtain for his coronation some idea which he might believe to be Carlovingian, or which was represented to him as such. Perhaps he had thought of bearing off the adornments which were said to have belonged to Charlemagne and which were made use of at the coronation of the German emperors, but he found the greater part of these were preserved in Nuremberg when the king of the Romans was to be crowned elective Megans gave notice to the magistrates of X in Nuremberg. Thereupon certain deputies conveyed from Nuremberg the golden crown, weighing fourteen pounds, the ring, the scepter, the orb, the shoes, the sword, which had been brought down by an angel from heaven, a flowing alb, a stone, a mantle with a belt from X was set a shrine covered with diamonds, in which was preserved the blood of Saint Stephen, the ordinary sword of Charlemagne with his baldric and a gospel written in letters of gold which he had made use of unable to avail himself of the treasures at Nuremberg Napoleon ordered only the ordinary sword to be sent to Paris this was not much but there were some French as well as German adornments which had belonged to Charlemagne though to employ them would perhaps be a too open imitation of ceremonial at the coronations of the Capetian kings of the third dynasty these monarchs although themselves usurpers had not hesitated to keep up the tradition of that famous emperor by decking themselves on the day of their coronation with the insignia which they pretended to have once belonged to him besides this they used afterwards to send for rest one of their intended control generals of the plate chest, suitably escorted to carry to the collegiate church at X of Paul, black velvet striped and watered silver silk, trimmed with ermine and embroidered with arms of France to be laid upon his tomb. These French ornaments of Charlemagne were kept at the Abbey of Saint-Denis, whence at the king's order sent through the masters of ceremonies they were borne by two ecclesiastics to rest, the most important of these were said Domnier, the crown of the Holy Charlemagne, Emperor and King of France, which is of the imperial form in massy gold and encircled with precious stones. Great price. The golden scepter of the Holy Charlemagne, Emperor and King of France, on the handle of which is the likeness of the aforesaid Holy King, seated on a chair flanked by two lions and two eagles with the imperial crown on his head, the scepter in one hand and the or even the other, and all of this is wrought of pure gold, resting on a fleur-de-lis of gold, and white enamel surmounting a golden apple crusted with precious stones. Then there was the hand of justice made from a unicorn's horn mounted on a shaft of gold, and the royal sword of the holy Charlemagne, king of France, and emperor, the blade of which was very beautiful and of fine temper, the palm of the hilt and the guard of the same were of massive gold studded with precious stones. Lastly, there were two golden spurs covered in fleur-de-lis on an azure ground, adorned with rich velvet fastenings embroidered with gold. Several antiquarians, however, were very doubtful about the authenticity of all these. Mount Faucon did not hesitate to declare that if the pommel and the guard of the sword were ancient, the hilt and the rest of it were of a much later period. The scepter was thought to have been made by the goldsmith Charles V, who took Charlemagne for his patron. The other objects were scarcely more genuine, but in such cases, the mere tradition is sufficient to arouse belief. The revolution, however, had not spared the treasures of Saint Denis, the scepter, the spurs, and the hand of justice were to be found in the Cabinet des Antiques at Paris, but the crown and sword had disappeared. The citizens Monge, Gavier, and Leblanc having commissioned by the directory of the Department of Paris to bear away the treasures of Saint-Denis, and they had not scrupled to risk their reputations for patriotism by squabbling round the melting pot for the possession of the crown, as the emperor wished for the crown of Charlemagne. It would have to be made. The pattern followed was not that depicted in Tom Philippian's engravings, but a choice of design such as had been described by good authorities as regards the sword. It had been agreed that the one from X would suffice when Segur received a letter from a certain Monsieur Laurier living at 219 Rue Montmartre, opposite the Rue de Vieux Augustin. Laurier stated that he had a sword in his possession, which had formerly been in the Treasury of Saint Denis. It had been carried off in 1792 by the commissioners of the Director of Paris and sold on the 25th of Vendemire of the year 6. 
with a quantity of miscellaneous articles from the royal wardrobe and other places. It had been recognized as genuine by the antiquarians of the bibliothèque, by a keeper of the treasures of Saint-Denis, and by Monsieur Auguste, who, at the coronation of Louis the Sixteenth, had given it into the hands of Monsieur de Clermont-Tonnerre, who held the office of constable. The palace was greatly excited at this news. Sigur sent the letter on to de Rock, who forwarded it to Talleyrand, and it was agreed that this sword should be selected and shown to his majesty on his return to Paris. But at this moment, a new sword of Charlemagne appeared just as genuine as those of ex Nuremberg and Saint-Denis were so even. For there was nothing left of it except the blade. It was said to have been long preserved in the treasures of Saint-Denis and to have been sold with the contents of the wardrobe. In the year six, Fleurieu was very put out. And after consulting the prefect of the Seine and Lenoir, the director of the Museum of the Petit Augustin, he concluded that after long research, the choice lies between a hiltless blade possessing numerous characteristics of antiquity and showing several traces of design according to the fashion of that barbarous age and an entire sword with the hilt of gold displaying the same characteristics and evidences of a like origin a sword which monsieur dinam feels certain is the one that was used at the consecration of the kings it was agreed that this one should be selected and that it was useless henceforth to bring to light or discover any more sword blades which might possibly have belonged to charlemagne 